Let's look at the input uh, function, the unit uh, input function. So the unit input function is another very important signal uh, in the uh, in the engineering world. Uh, not only, uh, I mean, it sounds like very special uh, uh, or very uh, maybe not practical useful. Actually, it's very practical useful, and uh, people actually use very similar, very close to the ideal impulse function to model the system actually okay so uh, let's see what this unit step function really uh, the unit impulse function really is let's start with the function here so i have a pose the um this this function has the width of delta so the delta here the width of this pose is the delta delta is, i mean is the interval of time right and the um height of this uh, the height is 1 over delta so the height of this function the the height of this pulse is 1 over delta and so the area underneath this really is just a delta the area underneath this is just a 1 over delta the height times the base which is delta that's equal 1 so this pulse is has the area uh, a one, or the, if you integrate this pulse over time, you get a one. Okay, we can represent this pulse as if you if you remember the uh, unit step function, right? So the unit step function here, we can think about this pulse as we have one function and a minus another one. Okay, so we we'll have one pulse minus another pulse. We they have the same magnitude, so. In this case, I can represent f as the uh, one over delta times the first one. Here is we basically we move that function to the left, so we add uh, delta. Uh, so we um, add uh, delta t, add delta delta over half. So that's u t plus delta over half. Right. This is the first function. If you add half half delta, you will move this to the left by uh, by uh, delta over half over two, and minus the other pulse, which is u t plus u t minus minus delta over two, and that's the function of f t. Okay. So let's let's make this function. So in this case, uh, that's all you can write. This is as delta on the denominator. You have u t plus delta over two minus u t minus delta over two. Okay, and so the delta t will if you have if you let this delta goes to zero. And that's where that's where the f t becomes delta t. So, so during this process, we didn't change the area, right? But as you go to this limit, the the uh, magnitude of this delta function at t equal to zero is really infinity. But the if you integrate, so if you integrate the delta t, so the delta t. Um, if you write the delta t here, so the delta t will be equal to um, equal to infinity when t equal to zero, or if, if t is not equal to zero, anywhere else, the delta t will be equal to zero. So this is very special one, just from one pulse. But the area underneath that still, since the the way we get this from we squeeze this f t right. So during this process, during the squeezing process, we did not change the area underneath that uh, f t. So you, if you integrate this from zero minus to zero plus, the delta t dt is going to be equal to one. So that's where this unit impulse comes from. Okay. So let's do. Uh, let's look at uh, the. Uh, the Laplace transform for the delta function and which is a very special function and its Laplace transform is really interesting. Fs is 
In this case, I have to put a negative there, zero minus there because they, we have infinite step change at t equal to zero. Right, so in this case, I have t zero infinity to infinity delta t and e2 minus st dt. Since we know when t is not equal to zero anywhere else, is not equal to zero, and the t equal to uh, the um, uh, the uh, delta t will be zero, or I can write the two integrate in two intervals. So I have a zero minus to zero plus. Zero plus is very close on the right hand side of this time axis. So just to be positive, but very close to zero as well. So in this case, I have a delta t and e2 minus the, uh, st dt. And then I have uh, zero plus to infinity. During this time, the delta t is going to be equal to zero, right? We know the delta t will be equal to zero when t is not equal to zero. So therefore, we have e2 minus st dt. So this term will go to zero for sure. And what about the first term? So the first term we are looking at right at e2 minus st, uh, e t equal to zero, right? So during that, at that point, so for, so e2 minus st is gonna be equal to one uh, when when t is equal to zero, because you're looking at very close to zero minus to zero plus, you're really getting infinitely close to that, so that this term is going to be equal to one. So therefore, fs is going to be equal to zero minus to zero plus delta t. Delta t still has that uh, infinite uh, input, the, the magnitude at t equal to zero, right? But e2 minus st, this is the one, dt. And we know the integration with this one here is 0 minus to 0 plus delta t dt. And that's equal to 1. That's the definition of the unit step function. Right? So let's look at the Python code. Uh, the Python code, actually, there, there you, we can do this Laplace transform using the Python code also. So I have here I have a plot of the unit step function, and I use NumPy to plot this. And um, so this is the uh, this is the module, uh, this is the the, uh, the module I used for uh, for for getting the linear points, and also using the uh, matplotlib for the uh, for plotting the signals in time and uh, for the uh, Laplace transform I use the uh, SymPy that's the symbolic module that dealing with all the symbolic uh, uh, manipulations so there is a function called Laplace transform and in the Python they call the heavy side that's the um, function that's the unit step function and this function will uh, will define the ut so we take the Laplace transform then and you get the Laplace transform so the uh, return the turn result the first element in that turn return the um, uh, return the uh, value is the Laplace transform so that's one over s uh, quite clear and for the uh, this the plot a, a the pulse um, and you can you can try the code. You can try to change the delta. And in this case, I change the I set the width as one millisecond, and the height would be thousand. Right. So that's give you the unit of uh, uh, the uh, area of one. And if you do the very interesting for this one, if you do the uh, Laplace transform using the Python, and uh, in this case also Laplace transform, there is a function called the Dirac delta that's the delta t okay but when you take this also this will take the initial condition here so that's the minus ut zero i think this should be ut zero minus because you integrate from zero minus so the initial condition you should use is ut minus uh, ut uh, zero minus so in this ut zero minus should be zero right to the step function when 
t is less than zero, the um, the uh, u t is going to be uh, zero. So one minus zero. This should be one. But in this case, uh, so this is how you do. Uh, although this is really simple, but you 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 can do the other Laplace transform using Python as well as later we will demonstrate that uh, in the other um, in the other um, lectures. Okay, that's about it for uh, for the brief introduction of the Laplace transform, and I uh, will see you next time.